Hi guys, thanks for watching this special episode of Pro Tips. Today we're going to check out the incredible flex plate system from Wham Bam. I love these. As you may know, we're the proud Australian distributors of Wham Bam products because personally, I think they are awesome. I first tried one of these on the original Sidewind X1 and it was a serious game changer. No more slamming the prints with the paint scraper, my adhesion issues disappeared, and best of all, the models just popped off when finished. When I heard they had launched the same system for resin printers, I was really excited. Today we're going to run through how to install these and the best practices for using them. Okay, let's head down to the print lab and meet John, our resident print technician, who will be helping us with this today. Okay, we're down here with John in the print room, our resident print technician. John, let's have a chat about the Wham Bam for FDM. We've been using them for quite some time. Just talk us through what's involved in the Wham Bam, how does it work? Not a problem. Okay, well the, uh, the Wham Bam system, as you can see, is a metal plate which has magnetic attraction to the magnetic base here, which is glued onto your regular heat bed. Once it's attached on there, it's just a simple matter of sliding it over the top of it and the magnet will pull it straight on there and it won't move. There's no chance of it sliding around while the print job's going. The surface that's on there is PEX and it works particularly well for PETG, TPU, even PLA. And this sheet, that obviously comes off there, John, is that right? That's correct. So you can actually replace these sheets simply by warming up the bed. That makes the gum soft and then you start peeling it back and it will come completely off the metal and then you can put a brand new one on. As you can see from this one, it's been used quite a bit and you start to get little chips that come out of it. It's at that stage you start to think about replacing it. The other thing you can do is have a different type of surface on the other side. In this case, we have PEI attached to the back side of it and we can flip it over and use the PEI surface instead if we're working with PLA. PEI works particularly well without a heated bed. It's such a good surface that I don't need to warm up that bed to work with PLA. It will stick perfectly fine to it and it comes off very easily. And so these are handy, what are these here? In this case we've 3D printed corners to allow us to easily line up the sheet when we're putting it back in. So we just slide it up to the corner of it and then drop it straight down and then we know it's all aligned up properly with the heat bed. So have a look at this here. You printed this last night. It's the Monocure 3D swatch done in silk gold, I believe. Silk gold, yes. Very, very nice. And you did it on the PEI surface. So we've had very good adhesion there. Excellent adhesion. I guess the next thing to do is let's have a look. If you just look at that, just by simply peeling back, you can see how the corners are just coming straight off, just like that. And then I can just go drop, drop, drop. Notice that there's no PLA sticking so badly that it damages it. And the other benefit of it sticking so well is that when it cools down, there's no warping. It maintains its shape. And then it's just a simple matter of taking the rest of it all off and then you're ready to go again. Okay, John, can you please talk us through the best way to install one of these on your FDM printer? Okay, the Wham Bam system comes with the metal plate, the PEX and the magnetic base. The magnetic base has an adhesive backing on it made by 3M. The bed, if you've been um, one of these guys who likes to put gum down or hairspray or all those sorts of things, you need to remove that thoroughly off the glass first. That glass has to be spick and span with no dust on it. Even a small speck can cause a bubble or a lump. So once you've done that and you've cleaned it off, remove all the dust, that's when you're ready to start peeling back the adhesive. Once you start peeling it back slightly, you line up the edge of the magnet perfectly with the edge of the glass so that you know that when it's fully laid down on the glass, it will line up with all edges. So once that first edge is down, and even heating up the bed just a little bit will actually help with the adhesive sticking to that glass. Maybe heat it up to 50 degrees C to start with, start sticking it down, and then very slowly peel back that backing whilst rubbing your thumb back and forth as you peel back and that will adhere the glue to the surface whilst removing the bubbles all the way through until the backing is completely removed and then you just make sure that there's no bubbles. If there are any bubbles, because you've heated up the bed, it's very easy to peel it back a fraction, rub that bubble out and then keep going. If it's a sticky surface like the, uh, the PEX or the PEI, if you've got a cloth, it's very smooth to run back and forth without catching your thumb, your skin on, on the surface there. I would probably put the metal down straight onto the magnet whilst it's still warm. I'd then go through a very similar process that I would do for the magnet, 
peeling it back just a fraction on the corner, lining it up perfectly, and then using the cloth to go back and forth, slowly removing the backing as I'm going, just to make sure that there's no bubbles. And then once I'm finished, the backing's completely off. If you see any bubbles, once again, peel it back a fraction, use the cloth to get the bubble out, and then fold it back down again. Mm. This comes with a, a film on it, and the film you would normally remove after you've got it down and you've removed all the bubbles just to protect the surface. Yeah. But you can see over time, I mean, the surface of it does end up being scratched, uneven, bits coming out. Once it's completely new and down on the surface and you've peeled back that layer, it looks almost like the surface of the, of the PEI. It's very clean. Sometimes the centre of the bed will be a little bit higher or a little bit lower than the rest of the bed. Quite often could be just be gravity. Just to compensate for that thickness, that difference in thickness, I sometimes put a bit of tape in the middle just to ri rise up that magnetic um, sheet just so everything's level. Mm, yeah. So you might have all four corners on the outside perfectly level, but then you go to check the, um, the gap in the middle and the gap is 0.2 of a millimetre thick as opposed to zero, yeah. in which case we pat it out. So that actually happened to me the other day and I took that trick of yours by putting some tape. But interestingly, after a few prints, it didn't need it anymore and I ended up removing it. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. it sort of sorted itself out. Yeah, well, um, quite often uh, when you're heating up a bed, the shape of the bed will change okay. through heat. Most of the heat is in the middle of the bed uh, and it spreads out. So the outside is never the same sort of temperature as the middle. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's the uneven heat. The uneven heat. So, but it's a good trick to know. And yeah, as it, if you need to remove it, you can always remove it. Or Absolutely. you need to add more, you need to add more. So this is the one for the resin printers. John, what's the main difference between this and the one for the FDM printers? Well, they're very similar, but the, uh, the main difference is the magnet that's being used on there has two variances to what we have on the FDM. The first one is the glue they use on the backing is much stronger and can prevent the resin or any of the other chemicals that you might be immersing it in from causing that glue to come apart and, and cause the magnet to fall off the bill plate. Yeah. The second one is the thickness of the magnet. It's a lot thicker than the one on the FDM printer to allow that smaller piece of metal to not slip or move or get pulled off. Because remember, in a resin printer, you're pulling the model off in between each layer away from the FEP sheet, and that force is very strong. So that magnet has to be equally as strong to prevent that piece of metal from popping off each time the layer is raised. Yeah. The other difference is that that bare metal doesn't require any PEX or PEI sheets stuck to it. Do you know what, John? I reckon we should install one on this new Creality that you've got. Absolutely. And show us how to do it. Let's start by opening. Mm -hmm. All right, so within there, uh, all the important bits that you need. In this case, we have the magnetic base and the metal plate. That's very tightly attached to that. You can see how strong that is. Put that to one side for the meantime. That's our magnet. We also have in the package our sandpaper and we take our plate and it doesn't matter which side you decide to do but just do one side and we just do a circular motion on the surface right up to the very edge it does seem very wrong to be doing this however it does make a big difference to its ability to adhere to the base of the model if you need a model where the, the model's being built directly on the surface there and you need that to be shiny flip it over and just yeah adhere to that side. So then that surface is ready. I would probably give it a good clean with IPA because there's a lot of metal that's been displaced off the surface there and that metal would, could potentially get stuck to the surface of the magnet as well and you don't want that. I'll put that to one side. So the next thing we need to do is attach this to the build plate of the printer. You may be wondering, hang on, that's going to make the, the homing of this slightly out of kilt because it's a bit thicker. Not a problem. We're going to rehome this once we've put the magnetic base and the metal plate on there to compensate for that extra thickness. So let's start by removing the existing build plate. Fortunately, the thickness of this system isn't so large that you need to make any modifications for this particular printer. There may be other printers out there that you may need to make a modification to where the the homing sensor is. We have the homing tab here that goes into an optical sensor to indicate when it's at the home position. That may need modifying on other brands of printer. In this case, we don't need to worry about that. First thing we do is to make sure that that surface is perfectly clean because you've been using this in, in your resin for possibly months on end and there's probably a buildup of resin that's on there. We want this to be perfectly clean. 
Now it doesn't matter that the surface is already scuffed up similar to what we've just done on that metal. This glue will adhere to it extremely well. So there's our clean surface. Here's our wham bam. In this case, because it's so small, I can confidently take that entire backing sheet off and start by lining up the edge of that perfectly on the edge there. Now that that edge is perfectly lined up, I can easily just run my thumb across there as I'm lifting up the edge of it till I get to the side of it and then I squeeze out whatever gums on the back of that, press it down on the surface, make sure it's perfectly flat and there it is, done. If this was a much larger bill plate, I would do the same thing that I would do on the FDM and just peel back a portion of that backing sheet and start on the edge and then slowly peel it back as I'm going. But in this case, it's so small, it really isn't a problem. Let's set it up, basically configuring it for printing. So we've got a, a magnetic plate. We're just gonna line it up as best we can like that. Then we stick it back onto the printer and then we grab our usual Allen key that we would use to loosen up the four screws to loosen up the build plate to allow it to move. All right, so the next thing we need to do is, and this may vary from printer to printer, is to go into the homing option. So we go into manual. This is very similar from printer to printer and we select the home option. Making sure that you've got the build plate completely loose. Now, John, I notice you've not gone with the paper method there. You've gone no. with the, uh, the, the, the FEP method. The thickness of the FEP can vary by 0 0.05, even to 0 0.1 of a millimetre in thickness from machine to machine, from vat to vat, from even getting third party FEPs um, installed on your machine. When that thickness changes, you would quite often need to know what that thickness was beforehand. By doing it this way, it's very easy to just leave it in place, not have to worry about a sheet of paper, because the sheet of paper is typically about 0.1 of a millimetre in thickness. And, well, they come in lots of different Oh, they, exactly. You might have yeah. uh, 90 GSM, which yeah. could be a bit thicker, yeah. exactly. Or, or baking paper, which is thinner. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So in this case, I know that I'm homing down onto a surface that will be exactly at zero when the job starts printing. So now that I've got that in place, I'm holding it down I'm tightening up the four screws very gently, very slowly, alternating from that point on one side to the other whilst pushing down slightly on the build plate. Now, do not press too heavily down on the build plate because some of the LCD screens on these printers do have a bit of give in them. So when you press down, just do it gently so that you know that the build plate is touching the FEP surface on all corners. So there you go, the build plate is now homed. The screw positions on the side here are a little bit higher, but everything works fine without any major modifications. So now, I mean, if you wanted to, you know, pour some resin in there and go for it, we uh, give it a try and see, see how easy it is to get the print off. Yeah, absolutely. So here's one we prepared earlier. Let's uh, take it off uh, and show us how uh, that process works. All right, so I'm just grabbing the tab that sticks out on the corner here and bending it downwards to release it from the magnetic plate. So now I'm ready to actually start printing my next job because I've got a secondary plate ready to go. So it's just a simple matter of getting a, a towel to wipe that, take off any excess resin, because if you do not do this, you'll end up with a thin layer of resin between the magnet and the metal plate. And that can reduce the amount of grip that the magnet has on the plate and it can slide around. And just put that back on, put it in place, and then we go print and start the job again. So now I can take that part, leaving it on the plate, just so it can stay as flat as possible, because if you remove a part off of the bill plate straight away, there's the possibility it'll start to warp and, and curl in and it'll lose its shape. So we'll leave it on the metal. So we'll give it a good rinse off, get the excess resin off. So that's in obviously in the, the resin away. This is dump the wash. resin away. Dump yeah. wash. This is, is our dump wash. You can see it's been used quite a number of times in various different colours. We can put it in the Ultra Sonic Cleaner, which has got fresh resin away inside it. And we'll let that go for a few minutes. Much cleaner. Okay, now we can properly see the logo that's on the side of the disc there. And we're just going to remove some of the liquid there on there. And then I'm going to use the air compressor to take the excess off that surface there. See how wet it is? So John, if someone didn't have an air compressor, they could obviously use a, like, a lint-free cloth and dab it off, but you just have to be careful because that surface isn't quite cured. Correct, yeah. You don't want to take any of the detail off the model. 
by being a bit brutal with a, a cloth. All right, so now we're going to put it into the curing station. And we'll give that a number of minutes to cure. This is a particularly strong curing station that we use, so it won't take very long. And it's a very thin model. So John, I noticed you left it on the wham bam. Why'd you do that? If you take a model off the, um, the metal plate, it can start to warp. And this prevents it from warping during the curing process. As soon as that's cured, if I take it off the plate, it will retain its shape. Have a look how we went. Looks pretty good. All right, so this is the, the, the real test. Let's see really if it lives up to its name and is actually gonna pop off. Wow. No problems at all. And if you wanted to, you could flip it over, put it back in the curing station and cure the other side. So when it's time to replace the resin that's in here with a different type of resin or a different colour, it's important to remove all the excess resin that's on the build plate. Keep in mind, you've got that magnetic plate on there. You don't want to soak it too long in the cleaning solution that you're going to be using. So it's important to clean all the components properly, but briefly. In this case, we're just using simple resin away, getting the bulk of it off there, but I'm not gonna soak it in any solutions to clean it because the aim of this is simply to remove the, the color of the resin that's on there at the moment. And that prevents any possibility of the glue that's adhering that magnet to the metal plate from ever coming loose. Quick squirt with IPA. And then we just dry it all off. So John, is there any maintenance that you would recommend apart from the cleaning, anything to do with the flex plate that needs to happen uh, to keep that in good condition or is it? Um, no, just a simple matter of cleaning it. It's stainless steel. You can't really damage it unless you whack it with anything metal. So it's important to not be tempted to use a metal scraper on the surface of it because you will gouge it. But that is, you know, typical with, with any kind of surface that you want to keep fairly pristine. And you shouldn't ever have to do that because you're removing the model by popping it off. And if there are little bits that are stuck on there, use a plastic scraper, it'll just come straight off. When you're changing the, uh, the plate and you're putting a new one on, always make sure there is no resin on either of those surfaces. If you get a pool of resin on the edges there and you go to put it on, you'll have two problems. Boom, you get squirted in the eye with resin. And the second problem is it acts like a lubricant and will cause that plate to slide around a bit too much. Safety first, glass is always recommended when using resin or any, any types of liquids, even the cleaning process. So now that bill plate's ready to go with the next resin and I'll clean out the vat like I normally would and put a different resin in. Well, thanks a lot, John. That's been very, very helpful. And I'm sure uh, anyone who has one of these Wham Bams uh, is a lot more better educated about how to use it properly. And anyone who hasn't got one is now going to run out and buy one because, uh, let's face it, it does make everything a lot easier. Absolutely. Thanks, yeah, thanks a lot for your time. No worries. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you found that informative. Make sure you put one of these on either your FDM printer or your resin printer. They're an amazing product. You won't be disappointed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing.